Podcast Office Hours. This is Jim Hoffman, and these are your Monday Minutes. Guys, thanks again for joining me for another episode. Um, Today, we're going to continue on with respiratory emergencies. This is part six, and we're going to focus on pulmonary edema. Sometimes it's called CHF as well. Um, And this can actually even be in the cardiology section as well, right? Because the causes of pulmonary edema at times can be cardiac related. But before we get into pulmonary edema, I want to talk about why this is important. I always mention this during every episode to tell you that while this is key information and you might see this a lot on EMS tests, it's not just for your exams, right? It's to help build your knowledge base, to kind of ring a bell or two about this content, maybe encourage you to go research a little bit more, help you make better clinical decisions, write better call reports, and even interact with other healthcare professionals, your fellow medics, doctors, nurses. Okay, so it kind of all ties in together, guys. But I hope that, you know, whatever it is, it does encourage you that if you're not sure what, what I mentioned today, what I talk about, what I bring up, that you go research it in another venue. Maybe you use a, a blog or you use a website, your textbook, maybe something like myturbomedic.com, something like that, right? To help you understand it more and really master this content. Okay, so let's get into today's episode, guys. Again, pulmonary edema is the deal today. This is that filling of the lungs with fluid, right? It's in the interstitial spaces. What's happening is the alveoli or or both that and the interstitial spaces are becoming filled with fluid, okay? Now, it can be either high pressure, which is that cardiogenic type of, of reason, okay? Sometimes it can be resulting from a myocardial infarction, or it can be something like high permeability. That's non-cardiogenic, right? Things like hypoxemia, near drownings, shock, okay? Those are the two different types of pulmonary edema. I'll get into that a little bit more here in a second, all right? So let's talk about the high pressure one first, all right? This is where you get that that impaired gas diffusion, all right? Uh, mainly, of course, oxygen, all right? Now, in high pressure, this is that ischemia that leads to the left ventricle failure that then leads to increased ventricular pressure, and that leads to... Thing being pushed into left atrium, and then that pushes back into the pulmonary veins, okay? Now that increased pulmonary capillary pressure that you're getting gets those engorged vessels, they leak, and then fluid accumulates in the interstitial spaces, okay? That impairs gas diffusion, okay? And then you get alveoli, that rupture, and then you get your fluid in the lungs, okay? Now, when we talk about, and this is cardiogenic, right? The high pressure is cardiogenic, just to kind of put that out there again. Now we talk about the the um, high permeability pathophysiology, right? This Again, this is non-cardiogenic, right? This is the alveolar or capillary membrane becomes disrupted, all right? You get severe hypotension, Patients have severe hypoxemia, things like, again, the near drownings, post-cardiac arrest, severe seizures even can do that, high-altitude type patients, environmental toxins, even septic shock, all right? That increases that permeability where you get that lung, that fluid buildup in the lungs, okay? So some things to think about, guys, again, you don't, I, this is a very short, short presentation here, so if you're not understanding what I mean by high permeability, right, or the high pressure, crack open that textbook and take a quick look, refresh your memory, okay? Because this is the stuff you're going to see on your exams, all right? So keep that in mind. Now, your assessment for these patients, right, you know, most of the time you get that acute shortness of breath, all right? Patients have been having a problem sleeping, laying flat for, for a day or so, right? They have uh, increased pulmonary edema, right? Ask them if they're having any chest pain. Remember what I just mentioned, that, uh, that, that MI could be, could be causing it as well, right? Check out their history. Do they have a cardiac history, 
All right, they could be having an hypoxic episode. Chest trauma even can do it. All right, toxic gas, you mentioned that earlier, and high altitude. All right, so when you're assessing your patients, think about everything that's going on with them. The history is key as well. A lot of times patients will have a history of pulmonary edema, okay? And again, they might have a history as well of, of, of fluid buildup, re, an increase in fluid buildup lately. Maybe they have more pedal edema than usual. Maybe they have some ascites going on in their abdomen where they have some edema building up there. And like I said, having a problem laying flat recently, they go into the bathroom a lot in the middle of the night, things like that, okay? Think about all this type of stuff that led up to the acute shortness of breath of the pulmonary edema actually happening, okay? Um, we talk about uh, um, things like some signs and symptoms. Again, I mentioned the edema already, right? But look at things like that shortness of breath, right? The orthopnea going on. They might have more shortness of breath when they exert themselves. And that exertion doesn't have to even really be exertion. It could be them just taking a short walk from the bedroom to the, to the bathroom. And their lung sounds, you'll have those crackles, the rails. They might be fine. They might be cross, coarse rails. You might even hear some wheezing as well, that cardiac wheezing you might have heard about in the past. right? SBO2 re readings are going to probably be lower than what you might want to see much lower than that 94%. Of course, this also depends upon how far into that pulmonary edema they are, okay? Um, they're going to be tired. They're going to look tired, okay? Um, and again, those wet-sounding lungs, keep an eye out for that. A lot of times, these patients, guys, especially if it's an acute thing where it just happened in the middle of the night, they wake up in the middle of the night with this, right? That edema is kicked in. And you can actually probably hear those rails from across the room without being using your stethoscope, okay? So keep all this in mind, guys. And again, don't forget about the MI or seeing uh, EKG changes on these patients as well, all right? Some cardiac dysrhythmias. Keep an eye out for that type of stuff, all right? And again, I mentioned orthopnea. That's the whole not being able to uh, breathe when you're laying flat. You got to sit up to breathe, okay? Uh, things that you're more short of breath, depending on what position that you're in, okay? Now, we talk about management for these patients, guys. Of course, you want to follow your local protocols. Most guidelines want to go ahead and talk about your airway support, of course, which is your oxygen, maybe even intubation, depending on how far along the patient is. Uh, CPAP, of course, is nowadays a big standard of care for these patients, I don't know why that keeps happening. Um, nitroglycerin, sublingual, sublingual or paste, and that is often dependent upon a patient's blood pressure. Some places let you give paste depending upon what the BP is. Let's say it's 100 um, systolic, you give an inch. If it's 150, you give an inch and a half, things like that. EKG, of course, again for that MI, 12 lead, and try to keep the patient's Calm, guys. Don't get them excited. Don't let them exert themselves, okay? Okay, so that's it for the pulmonary edema, guys. I hope you got something out of this episode. Um, be sure, guys, to go ahead and join me on social media. These are the social media channels I'm on mostly, which is Twitter, Instagram. I'm on EMS, at EMSA from both of these channels. Check me out on Facebook as well, the, the site. Uh, Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash EMS professional. I'd love to go ahead and uh, contact and, and interact with you on these channels. And guys, send me some, some minutes of your own, okay? I'd love to go ahead, he go ahead and maybe do something that you want to see here on the Monday Minutes as well, guys. And don't forget, check out the main site at emsseo.com. Get some more resources there to help you pass exams, build your knowledge base, Move that knowledge need a little bit every day, okay? And you can do that with some of this free stuff there. There's free presentations, free downloads, okay? And also study help, guys. Get the study guide. Watch the videos. Listen to the audios. Move that EMS knowledge base just a little bit every week, okay? And you'll find yourself being much more confident and less stressed on calls and when you're taking the exams. All right, guys, that is it for me. As always, I am Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours in the Monday Minutes.
stay.